area enclosed by a curve and the x-axis. You will find this on page 3 to 6 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. <clears throat> okay. Area enclosed by a curve and the x-axis. Consider the area bounded by the curve, this is the curve, y equals x squared, the x-axis, this is the x-axis, <clears throat> and the lines x is equal to a, there, and x is equal to b. We can find the area a by dividing the area into thin vertical strips as shown in the diagrams below. <clears throat> the area a of the region can be approximated by a series of rectangular strips of width delta x. So that width is delta x. And height, h. Okay. But the answer won't be accurate. So I can work out all the areas of these rectangles, but why will the answer not be accurate? Due to that little spaces. Do you see that spaces? So <clears throat> it will be approximation. We could make delta x much smaller and add the area of many rectangles, which will make the answer more accurate. As you can see, the thinner the strips, the better the approximation. So if you make the strips thinner, you will see the spaces will be less and that will bring it closer to the real area. As the rectangles approaches a width of zero, so if we can actually almost just make it lines, a width of zero, the answer approaches the true answer. We now write dx to mean the delta x rectangles are approaching zero in width. Okay, so, so we are trying to make that width striving to zero. The area A obtained in this way is defined as the definite integral of y from A to B and is denoted by this. So basically, if we are going to integrate and we substitute B and A, we will get the real area underneath this curve. So differentiation give me the gradient at the point and the whole thing about integration, more or less, is that it gives me the area under a curve. Because it's not a problem. Say, for example, you are having a straight line. And that's not a problem to find that area because it's a straight line. So you will just basically go and work out the area of that side trapezium. But the problem is when it's a curve. And that's why we use integration. Mm. Okay, let's just go for the formula. So the area enclosed by a curve and the x-axis, if y equals fx is a function with this y bigger and equal to zero, then the area a bounded by the curve and the x-axis and the lines x equals a and x equals b is given by that. So there's your boundaries. There, and I will just integrate it, substitute it, and find the area. Let's look at an example. So, <clears throat> we're first going to look at the area enclosed by a curve and the x-axis above the x-axis. Okay, we will also look, look below the x-axis, but first just above the x-axis. So, the area, there it is, okay, that's my formula. I will just integrate, I will just substitute, and that will be my area underneath that curve between 1 and 3. Now, if there's no units, the terms unit squared is used since area is a square measure and the units are unknown. So it's just to show that it's area. If it's centimeter, then it's centimeter squared. If it's meter, then it will be meter squared. Okay. Um, I'm just going to let you do one because we're going to do quite a lot. But I think just let's, let's do number B. Stop the video and do number B. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. <clears throat> let's look at number B. Okay, so if I want to find... Okay, let's first write down the formula. So if I want to find the area underneath that, between between one and four, so first the one the, the extreme one four and the beginning or the end one four and the beginning one one, 
And there's my formula. And again, look at your way of writing. Very important in formal mathematics. Okay, it's actually always important. But if you come to this stage, usually you go on with maths. And then it's really, really important. Okay, so I make my square brackets because I'm going to integrate now. So it's going to be um, plus 1, so it's 3 over 3. If it's just a constant, it's just getting an x. And there. Okay, let's just use that one. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just use my brackets. I'm going to substitute. So 2, I first substitute 4. bracket and now it's going to give me that value let's just quickly get it on my calculator <clears throat> 4 to the power of 3 is 64 times 2 equals divide 3 equals check that you see I like to work so plus that 4 Plus 4 equals, okay, it's 40, 46 and 2 thirds minus, okay, um, I just want to see that's just 2 over 3 plus 1. So it's 1 and 2 thirds. I, I prefer just to put it in brackets there so that if there's a negative, I will remember to to uh, multiply it, but it's not now. So 2, okay, so it will get 46 ABC 2 ABC 3 minus 1 ABC 2 ABC 3 equals, I'm just using my fra, ah, it was actually easy, I didn't concentrate, because it was 2 thirds minus 2 thirds, that was very easy, stupid of me to use my calculator. That will be the area that will be representing that area underneath the curve.